Let's talk about some of the principles of these materials. And it's important for you to understand the principles because if you are going to be creating alternative materials instead of buying them at home or variations, if you are a teacher, then you really need to understand these principles when you're creating the materials. The principle is called isolation of quality. And what we mean by that is that every material will teach one lesson. If with this material, the long rods, I'm supposed to learn length, that's it. It's not going to be confused with anything else because the lesson here is length. So when you look at these long rods, we have the smallest rod and it progressively gets longer till it's one meter. All the rods are one color. The only thing that's changing is the length. We could have easily had 10 different colors, right? But then let's say my child takes that material and they work with it and they've mastered it. I don't know what actually lesson they've taken away from it. Did they learn about color or did they learn about length, right? So we don't confuse it by mixing in too many lessons. There's one lesson per material. Isolation of quality. Just like in practical life, our materials are limited. There is one of every material so that in a very, very natural way, children learn to share or they learn to cooperate and work on it together or take turns. So the materials themselves are helping the children to build the social skills that they need to cope in the big world around them. Another one of the principles is that the materials must have a control of error. And again, this goes all through the classroom, okay? Now, the control of error means that when there is a mistake, the child is able to recognize that for themselves. We have done a beautiful video on the control of error. I will link it right here, and I will also put it in the, the link in the description box below so that you can access it and watch more about that. Now, when we are in visual training, if the child makes a mistake, they will be able to see their mistake. When we are in tactile training, if the child makes a mistake, they will be able to feel their mistake or hear their mistake or smell when they've made a mistake, all right? That would be the control of error. So you also have to keep that in mind when you are creating variations or you're creating uh, you know, extensions. You've got to make sure that there is an inbuilt control of error so that the child doesn't depend on you to correct them. As you can see, our materials are very beautiful and well-maintained. That's important because we want the children to be attracted to the material. They are the central focus of this classroom. So you've also got to make sure that whatever you make, whatever you create will be beautiful and attractive to the children.